Obviously, on Wednesday's show, we talked about a whole bunch of stuff. This morning, we found out that Piotr Jan uh, actually suffered a torn ACL, a torn meniscus, and a groin injury. He's scheduled to have surgery tomorrow. So this, you know, I was saying last week that maybe a Piotr Jan versus Cheeto Vera fight when Vera felt better down the line would make sense. But this could put Piotr Jan out for a year. This coming after he had announced... Well, actually, he hadn't fought in a year. Remember, the Marab fight was last March. Takes a year off, gets back on track. Very nice win uh, two weekends ago in Miami. And now he's probably going to be out for another year. So a bitter pill to swallow for one Piotr Jan. Um, and wish him well. And hopefully he gets, uh, you know, under the knife, safe and sound, quick recovery. And that's a lot of things to recover from. So I'm guessing, I'm no doctor, that's around a year or so. Although I did think Jamal Hill was going to be out for a year, and here he is coming back in April. So what the hell do I know? Uh, Also, Brendan Allen is now going to be fighting Chris Curtis again, not Marvin Vittori. That's in uh, two weekends. The next uh, UFC Apex card is this weekend, and that's the Amanda Hibas versus Rose Namajunas fight. Um, Vittori out, but perhaps the biggest news of all came on Friday afternoon, my friends. Friday afternoon, we found out that UFC 301 will in fact feature a title fight, and it will in fact be a UFC flyweight title fight. We were debating would it be uh, Brandon Moreno if he beat Brandon Royville in New Mexico, or not New Mexico, in Mexico City. Obviously, that didn't happen, and then we wondered if it would be Brandon Royville against Alexander Pantoja in an immediate rematch for uh, Pantoja because he just beat him in December. And obviously that's not happening. And then we were wondering, is it going to be Mohamed Mukhaev because he's undefeated in the UFC and is on that long winning streak and has some buzz and some hype around him. And it's not him as well. Who is it? It's Astro Boy. It's Steve Ursag. It's Steve Ursag versus Brandon Royville. Excuse me, Steve Ursag versus Alexander Pantoja. UFC 301, May 4th in Rio and people lost their minds. People lost their minds when this was dropped. It's a tremendous poster, by the way. One of the UFC's best. Now, I feel like some of the feelings regarding this were diminished on Saturday when we found out that Jose Aldo all of a sudden is coming back against Jonathan Martinez. This kind of came out of nowhere. I think, haven't confirmed this a thousand percent, but this is towards the end of Aldo's contract. So I don't know if he wants to just kind of finish up and be free after this, or if there's some other motive to come back. Certainly, you know, it ups the star power and it makes that card a little bit more interesting. Martinez is on a very nice run. He's had some nice wins and Aldo's a legend and him fighting back in Rio is pretty darn great. And if this is the proper retirement fight, it's a very fitting place for the King of Rio. Um, Last I checked and heard, They aren't committing to this being the main event, Pantoja versus Ursig, trying to add a few more things. Aldo certainly ups the stock, but it could very well be the main event, and both camps have been told it could very well be a main event. Obviously, it's 25 minutes because it's a title fight. My feelings, I think the reaction was a little bit much. Would it have made that big of a difference if it's Mohaya versus Pantoja? Like, would you have cared that much more? Ursic's coming off a more impressive win, number one. Number two, if you just look at the landscape of who's available, there aren't many options. So if you were just being, you know, sensible about it all, that's why we kept saying, oh, if Almeida wins, maybe they do Aspinall. If Royville wins, if Moreno... Like, there isn't anything else. And number three, if you want a stacked UFC 300 card on April 13th, and that's what you all wanted, this is the byproduct. Now, of course, I heard some people say this is all DDP's fault. If DDP accepts the Izzy fight, then Pereira stays on 301, and everyone's happy. I guess you can say that. But look, DDP fought in January. That's a pretty damn quick turnaround. That's a three-month turnaround. He was banged up. Fine. My point is, if you want to stack the deck, if you want 300 to be what everyone wanted it to be, and that's the greatest card of all time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, there's always the other side of the coin, and it happens every time there's a stretch of stack cards. There's always going to be one, I don't know, I don't want to be disrespectful, but like somewhat thinner card. And honestly, I see a lot of people bellyaching. 
I would argue and I would bet that 98% of the people bellyaching online don't live in Rio, weren't planning to go to this event in Rio. So what are you complaining about? That this is a pay-per-view? Don't buy it. Don't buy it. The only people who should be complaining and have a case to complain about are the people in Rio who are hoping to spend money to go to the event and be there in person. Those are the only ones. You get one pay-per-view a year, you're hoping for something better. I totally understand where you're coming from. Everyone complaining all over the world about this being a pay-per-view, who cares? You're getting a pay-per-view two weeks later, you're getting another one a month later, you're getting a litany of other pay-per-views. Who really cares? No one's forcing you to buy this one. You don't have to buy every single UFC pay-per-view. Watch the prelims and move on with your life. So, I don't know. I, 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 I think the UFC, honestly, uh, needs to be cut a bit of slack here. There's really nothing else. Now you could just say, all right, don't do a pay-per-view that date. This is not how their business runs. They have certain dates events slotted for certain dates and they've got to fill those and, and, and they book them so far in advance. A lot of it, as we've talked about with Rick and GC over the years and over the months is all about timing. And again, it was going to work out perfectly. You were going to have Alex Pereira versus Jamal Hill as the 301 main event. And you were going to have Pantoja and the co-main who's complaining about that in Rio or outside of Rio. Unfortunately, they couldn't get that big time main event for 300, and I would argue they still don't have that big-time main event for 300. That's the frustrating part about all of this. That promo is so great, the Teenage Wasteland promo, and then I love how at the end, it ends with Jamal Hill looking off into the distance, and it's like some big reveal, and it's like, oh, this is it? And again, it's a great main event. It's just not what we all thought of when it comes to 300. No one could deny that. Even the biggest bootlicker can't deny that. But here I am saying, cut them some slack. Am I confusing you enough? I'm saying they had to do what they had to do because you all put so much pressure on them to have a big-time main event for 300, and as a result, they robbed Peter to pay Paul, and now 301 is left with Pantoja versus Ursig. And I feel bad for Steve Ursig if I do say so myself. He doesn't deserve this. All of you mocking him. This guy's getting his first title fight ever in the UFC. He's coming off a blistering knockout, an amazing knockout, a scintillating knockout, and everyone's saying, this isn't good enough. And you know who was leading the charge? You know who was creating memes up the wazoo about Steve Ursig? GC. What do you have to say for yourself? Steve Ursig joining us from Disneyland one time and uh, was yeah, kind Listen, man, Steve Ursig is great, and I agree with you that it is actually a pretty good fight, and the UFC was sort of put into a corner. They didn't really have any other options. It was either Mahayev, who was coming off a fairly boring performance, or Steve Ursig, who was coming off of a knockout. The timing just didn't line up, you know? We are sacrificing 301. I, I feel like I said this back in November or December. We are essentially sacrificing 301 for this unbelievable stretch of 298, 299, and 300. So it kind of is what it is, and now they're trying to save themselves with Jose Aldo coming back, and I see a lot of people complaining about that against Jonathan Martinez. But you cannot argue that it's not hilarious that Steve Ersig <laughs> is getting this title shot. I mean, he's such like a quelled, calm guy. There's nothing really exciting about him. He just sort of is who he is. He has three fights in. I mean, he made his debut less than a year ago. Like, if you are not a diehard fan, you really have no idea who this dude is. Oh, the responses so just, were... We're just the, the just the juxtaposition of him getting this title shot to me was was hilarious. I got nothing against Steve Ursek, and I I felt like the memes weren't like attacking Steve nah, Ursek the memes directly. Were great. It was the I just situation. couldn't believe that you pumped out like nine in the span of twenty minutes. All right, so I'm driving home and like I <laughs> see this news. Rick is the one that alerts me to it, and I'm just like, what is going on? Steve Ursek is really getting a title shot. We had floated this idea out there, yeah. uh, that like it could be the case. But just seeing the poster, seeing that 301 poster with Steve Ersig's face on it, I was just like, wow, this is hilarious. He's Astro Boy, baby. Put all your stock in Astro Boy. Yes. This man could be holding the belt from his debut. In two months. To him having the belt could be like an 11-month span for Steve Astro Boy. By the way, Boy, it's, uh, it's fitting that Astro Boy is on this meteoric rise. There it is. I mean, it's right there. there now, did you pull over? Did you pull over to create the memes, or did you go home and then? All right, so I had up? I had to go into a Walgreens. I was getting some uh, some snacks and some drinks, and like, yeah. I mean, as I'm walking through the Walgreens, my mind's just going crazy. <laughs> I mean, I'm just I'm starting to laugh to myself, and I just I had to race home and immediately start. Yeah, then I got on the laptop. I mean, it was a great little uh, Friday news dump. No, it was fantastic. Maybe that's why they left it for Friday, right? Uh, usually Fridays when you uh, drop the bad news on people, hoping that. Everyone's out for the weekend. Uh, Rick, your quick thoughts on this uh, 301 title fight. Still TBD, whether it's the main event, but we got that on Friday and Jose Aldo on Saturday. Your thoughts on the top of the bill as of now? 
uh, admittedly weak card, but my thoughts immediately went to September 9th, 2023, which was the date. Uh, you, uh, I see you're trying to yes. put the math together. What is what is September 9th, 2023? I have no idea. Oh, is that when Strickland beat Izzy? That's when oh. Israel Adesanya okay. defended his title because it was an Australia card and because there was nothing else available oh. and lost to Son Strickland, who became champion. This is what happens in that ecosystem. This is what happens when the UFC is basing their events around locations and is out of options. They don't have a better Brazilian option than Alexandre Pantoja. And it seemed like Steve Urseg is as good an opportunity, a good as good a fighter as any to hop in there. Again, I think he had a more per- impressive performance than Makayev. Um, and Royval had just gotten beaten twice by Pantoja. Why not Steve Urseg? And we have seen before that even if this is the the fight that maybe nobody was predicting or nobody was anticipating or nobody was looking forward to, sometimes we get the most memorable fight of the year. So I have no issue with it. I have no issue with this, I, I really this don't. opportunity. By the way, a reminder that we're getting two pay-per-views in June. We're getting June 1st, most likely Newark, June 29th, International Fight Week. Like, you just can't have... Now, now you can have a larger discussion. There's too many shows, blah, blah, blah. But, like, if this is what you want, if you want big shows... Every few weeks, there's going to be a lackluster one mixed in there. My biggest question is, who did you want them to book? Yeah, Everyone there was no- on 298, 299, Well, I think, I think people are still holding out hope that Alex goes out there, oh, okay. uh, absolutely God. demolishes Jamal Hill, and then all of a sudden is headlining. I mean, that's a dream. That's, that's, the, that's, that's, the, that's the new, like, who's going to headline 300. It is situation. crazy, though, that you got guys like, Bilal out there just like, you know, Marab begging for title shots, 10 fight winning streak stuff, and Ursa just waltzes right into it. Like, <laughs> it's just, it's, again, nothing against Steve Ursig. It's not like he has supreme star power uh, when it when it comes to this. It's not like he's Alex Pereira and he has this, you know, deep seated rivalry with Alejandro Pantano. No, it's like, amazing. That's why I love it, so much. I mean, about he's just it. working out for him. It is, I mean, enti- he's just working it out. is entirely a product of the location. There's no other way to. It's not just location, it's really location plus. 300, 299. Yeah, they, they stacked the deck with 299, 300. But if it was happening in any other location, if this if this card... There's no one available. On the back, well, I mean, Leon and Bilal could potentially fight somewhere. Um, There's other sure. big main events that are possible to make. It is strictly because this is happening in Brazil. And, th- and then you break down, like... Roy Val had to beat Brandon Moreno for this to happen. Uh, and then there's the whole Amir Albazi being hurt situation. Uh, and then... Mahayev has a sort of a lackluster performance and like all these things, Manel Kopp with the weight issues, all these things had to fall into place for Steve Ersik to get this shot. Like I love really it. Is. I love everything. And imagine it. if he capitalizes on it. Imagine if he goes why, to why Rio can't and he? Wins. Why can't he? He <laughs> very well could. He's so crazy. Steve Ersik is not a, a low level fighter just because he has not um, had, had the number of reps that somebody else has had. I, I think this is a fine fight. This, this guy was like a plus like 300 to David Dvorak in June of yeah. last year. And now he is fighting for a UFC title. One win away from being champion. Uh, it is amazing, though, if they if they book any other main event for 300, anything, Leon Bilal, DDP yeah. Izzy, then no one complains about that. You have, you have Pereira Hill, and then this is the co-main event, and people are like, yeah. all right, great. Yeah, yeah. And no one would have complained. If it was Izzy, DDP, or, or even... Ultimately, if it was Leon Bilal, I don't think anyone would have complained about 300. Like they, that promo, the promo is great, but the end, you watch it, you're like, oh, this is the payout. This is the big reveal, really. Um, that so fight made a lot more sense on 301. Uh, like, absolutely. A million. EP times. finished Robert Whitaker. There was a rip in time and space. <laughs> yes, it's been awesome. It changed everything. How about YouTuber Tommy Aspinall putting together a whole video? And talking about how he's going to seek John Jones, not to cause any ruckus or any drama or any issues, but uh, to have a bit of tete-a-tete with John Jones, a little face-to-face, fascinating stuff. And the interaction was great and memorable for one particular p- reason. Uh, I guess you, if you have already seen it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen it or just want to relive it via what he posted on his YouTube channel, you can see the entire video on Tom Aspinall's YouTube channel. Take a look at this. Oh, 
This is great right here. So he sees John coming up to him. Yeah, John's ready. John's ready. Just say hello. Just say hello. What's going on, man? How are you? I'm all good, man. And there's the move. Hand on the shoulder. John promptly removes it, unlike Sergei Pavlovich back at Madison Square Garden. It's a great edit right here from Tom. I would hope so. I would love to, man. I would hope so. Respect, man. All the best. Respect. All the best. Do a quick picture. Sure. Yeah? Let's get it. A face off. No, no, Just no, no. no, no, okay. No, no problem. No problem. No problem. No face off. That's great. Thank you, guys. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you, Tom. I would love to have the honor one day. I would love to have the honor. Maybe one day. Hope so, man. All, All the right. best. All, All the best. Right. How's everything? It's healing. So it's slowly but surely. Okay. All the best, man. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, man. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks for letting me come up. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Thank you. Double dap up at the end. Yeah. Gave him one big one and then went in for another one. Class stuff yeah, there. It's good, mate. All oh. peaceful. I'm, Aftermath. I want to fight him, but I don't want to fight in an event. I want to fight. I want to have a UFC fight with him. So I just asked if he'll give me the opportunity one day. He said he's healing up good. So we'll see. We'll see what he does. Class stuff there from uh, Tom Aspinall. And it is worth noting, John does have a surgically repaired shoulder. Perhaps that's why he didn't want Big Tommy putting his paws on the shoulder. What do you think, GC? You think that was the reason, or do you think he was trying to alpha Tom Aspinall? I think maybe Tom was trying to alpha him, do the move that he did on Sergey, you know, feel out there, and John just wasn't having it. Okay. Um, it was great, though. Everything about it was great. Also, how do you feel about the I would hope so line? Like, it almost felt like a kid going up to a superstar and be like, uh, sir, maybe one day I could be just as good as you. And he's like, yeah, keep dreaming, kid. Maybe one day he'll be there, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it. I, I can see it from both people's perspective. Like, I see it from John Jones' perspective of like, oh, I'm finally getting to meet the guy that was kind of coming after me on Twitter and I'm considered the greatest mixed martial artist of all time and he's just up and coming, just an interim champ. So, like... I, I see why John Jones like feels the way he does. Uh, I think the biggest one was when he asked for the face-off picture, and John was just shut that right down. He was just like, "No, nah, that's not happening." Yeah. And, like his whole team started chiming in too. They're like, "No, no, no, let's just let's just take a picture as friends." What's wrong with the uh, the face-off? Like, do you think that they felt like he was trying to sell a fight? Yeah, I don't know. Then then you put out the picture of the face-off. Yeah, and everyone gets all excited. Is John moving on from from Stipe. Is he going with Tommy? I Both enjoyed it. Are playing this perfectly. They yeah, are. I mean, it's great stuff. It's. I also love that Tom had to like go through the crowd and like people are like recognizing. They're like, "Oh, big fan, Tom, big fan." And then like the security guard, as soon as he turns around, he's just like, "Ah, oh, champ, what's up, man?" Uh, I thought that was funny. The perspective of yes. behind Tom Aspen right, right, going right. through the crowd. All of this is great. I can't get enough of this. The way I feel about all of this, even even the way John handled that and Tom, I loved everything about it. Is the antithesis of how I feel about the Ian Gary, Colby Covington videos over the weekend. Like, this is the way to build something. That is the opposite way of getting me interested in something. Like, like with, there's not a, a, an ounce in me that is interested in any of these stipulations, these videos. This fight is not even announced. It's not even signed. There's no even talk of it being in the works as of now. And, well, neither is John and Tom. To yeah, be I know, but this is getting me more interested, even though I didn't really need more. You know what I mean? Like, there's two ways of going about trying to, like, build a fight. That's the fun way, the organic, natural way. Like, oh, we yeah. ran into each other. This is, like, I hate to use the word cringe, but what are we doing here? Antithesis, great word, by the way. Uh, I agree with you because my personal preferences align with yours on this, but I don't think you're in the majority here. You think people like that? Yeah, I do. Oh, yeah, for sure. People love the Colby stuff. They uh, by the way, on both on both sides, like I I don't think if I'm Ian, I don't even respond to this. My biggest issue with the with the Colby and Ian thing is it's all these demands that are just never ever ever going to happen. It's not all even a real fight. Ian, yes, it's not the even I real. quit thing from from Ian to <laughs> yeah, Colby. It's just none of this is ever going that's, to materialize. That's the appeal of of the whole Colby Covington experience, though. None of it's based in reality. Like if you like Colby Covington. Or you are, you know, along for the ride with Colby Covington. You have to have checked facts and reality at the door a long time ago and accepted, like, the shtick. So, yeah, I don't think that matters. I don't think it matters that none of this is real because that's what this is. That's what Colby Covington's entire— I would actually is. like it more if there was a fight and they were using this to build the fight up. But I don't feel like any of this— You don't think they could? Could what? Fight. 
I don't think the UFC is looking at these videos and saying, oh, this is great, let's make this fight. They're either making the fight or not. Think, I don't think, yeah, I was going to no, say, I don't I think the, the videos were, were, were going to decide. Whether, I'm just saying, yeah, if they the had the fight booked, are... if it was June 29th, Ian versus Colby, and now they're making a series of videos to build up the fight, all right, now, okay, now it's fun. But this is not even a real oh, fight. How is this different than, like, Marab being like, you fight me next in 10 different funny videos? It's the same thing. You just don't like Colby Covington's shtick, which is fine. I don't like it either, but that doesn't mean it's not effective. That doesn't mean it's not going to work. It's no different than anybody else. It's not else. even a it's the it's same like, stuff. Don't if you don't respond before twenty four hours, as funny as I have, like that's not true. No, again, <laughs> that's reality the, does not come into play when also, it comes to. But Colby there's a Covington. difference between the that. I quit proposal is never going to happen. No, none of this Dana, is going to happen. Dana sees that. You know, I actually like that I quit thing. Let's let's book that first time. But you, ever but, but you said the Marab thing. There's a difference between that and Marab saying, I want to fight you. There's a difference between what saying, you like, mean? if you He's don't... I want to fight you. Yeah, this is... If you don't make this or this or this happen, the fight's off. Like okay, what? But you're there is no fight. You're taking it for literal. Yeah, you're, you're taking that's it what I do. Literally, but yes. it's not reality. That's not, that's that's uh, that you're playing kayfabe right now. You're you're pretending this is WWE. And, yes, and this is not how this works. That's just not how it works. He's saying nonsense. Now Ian Gary says nonsense. Now he's going to say nonsense again. Now he's going to say nonsense again. And then we've got a nonsense stew that maybe hopefully leads to a fight. There's no you're you're holding them to the letter of a law that yes. they themselves created. Because they're real fighters. Artificial. They're not pro wrestlers. Screw pro wrestling. All Logan right. Covington is a pro wrestler. In, no. In more ways How than dare one. You. How he's, dare he's you? Literally only How a wrestler dare you? and then only. Uh, yeah. No. The, the, you're 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 holding them to a different standard than everybody else. It is. Look again. I will. I will agree with you. I don't like it. I think it's really corny. I'm not on board with it. But I'm not the person that this is meant for. And it works. Oh, it definitely works. If you look at the if you look at the comments, people are like, "You you killed this, Colby." Ten. Yeah. Oh. Ian has nothing to say. And then what like, they say on Ian? <laughs> you can't. Oh, the say comments anything. are off. The comments oh, are fuck, off. Fuck! I forgot about that. Is that true? Ian should. Oh yeah, Ian should turn the comments back on. Honestly, uh, I think. If it if they don't end up fighting, I think the hindsight will make it look ten times worse. Certainly, like you know, looking back at this will be like, why did we even have this experience happen and waste time with it? But if it does happen, listen. I, by the way, I love the fight, and I love the fact that Ian wants it, and it's great that Colby's Colby coming around to it. Acknowledging him, yes, to me at least is even something. I just feel like historically, when these things happen, the UFC actually goes in a different direction. Like, oh, yeah, you guys want this so be. bad. Now let's book uh, Ian versus Sean Brady. I could see it. You know, I don't know. I don't know because I think it, I think the Kobe thing does work for some of the fans. And, and no, I'm saying it, I don't. I would love it, to see the fight. I just feel like it's a waste because I feel like they're not going to do it. I don't, I don't think that this not hope. impacts it one way or another. I don't think that this makes the fight more likely or sinks it either way. The USC has their plan, and if they're going to do it, they're going to do it. But I mean, again. It's Colby's thing. Who who would be the uh, the favorite in that fight? Oh, Ian, Ian becomes the baby face. I think. No, no, no. Who would be the betting favorite? Like who? who do oh, you think? oh, I think probably Ian Gary would. You think so? Wow, that's crazy. And and you think you think Ian's the crowd favorite? Okay, so it's interesting. No. If this happens in Florida or something, no. he ain't the crowd. I favorite. said the I said the baby uh, face. Colby has a lot of fans. Yeah. A lot of fans, and Ian Gary is. Uh, no. Nah. Uh, the the European is not going right to be. Now. The crowd not, favorite. No, I'm not saying that he will be the the crowd supporting him. What I said is he will be the baby face, right? He will be the the quote unquote good guy in this fight, and Colby will be the one who's who's the, yeah, the villain. The cock, now, right. will they want to root for that guy more than than the good guy in this scenario? Probably. Yeah, I could I could definitely see that. That's probably the way it goes. Uh, I think people will be cheering wildly hard for Colby. Yeah, I, I actually I think, think that's right. Colby will be the baby face in this, and if he gives Ian, no, Gary that's his not first baby loss, face. Yeah. That's not babyface. That's just the one who the crowd is behind. It's wrestling when the Rock, when the Rock is a is a heel, people still cheer for him. It's That's not. Right. It's not about okay, who okay, you okay. cheer for. All right, crowd favorite will be. I'll just put it in, in <laughs> layman's terms here. Crowd favorite will be Colby. If he beats Ian, I think that will be. He'll get a massive pop, and people will like him even more if he yeah, beats I agree Ian. With that. Yeah. yeah. Well, depending on where it happens, right? Sure. I if mean, it if happens it happened, in London, which yeah. I don't think so, but if it did, then yeah, I don't think. If it happens anywhere in America, it'll be strong for Colby, in my opinion. It would, it would be interesting. I mean, it would probably still London. be pretty strong for Colby, even in Europe. Cause, yeah, because, honestly, but just about just about anywhere other than Dublin. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Which is wild. 
All right, so we've sold this fight, yes? Okay, we're, we're in. We're right. in. Now, is it an I Done. quit match the, I was or is it a false count anywhere match? I was for the fight, but like the I quit. Hardcore. Yeah, hardcore match. Hours to answer. Uh, Layla working? had to do his next uh, right. betting promo. Hell in the cell. You guys are you guys are trying to hold Colby coming to, to a promo. Like, are we gonna die? Go back and dissect every other promo yes. he said yes. nonsense for and be Listen, like, oh, he throws out stipulations. Never, I take it seriously. Okay, I want to know. We are talking about it. It's working. That was We're that was talking Ian about who it. said that. I, but but uh, Colby, Colby had his own stipulations as well. Yes, of course. He's the one that kind of started it. Based that was on great. It. I mean, here we are talking about it. I've actually completely turned. This is great promotional Let's do stuff. it. All right. Um, all right. Is there anything else that we need to talk about before we go? Ursic, title shot, Jose Aldo back. Uh, John Jones, Tom Aspinall doing their thing. Uh, Ian and Colby doing their thing. I uh, feel like we uh, covered it all. Islam Mahachev um, was talking to some outlet and said that... Uh, He'd be down for the Poirier fight. Sign me up for that. Um, what else? Is there anything else that's happened? I haven't looked at Twitter today. Did I miss anything? Anything we need to discuss? Or are we good? That's the busiest. Oh, she's back? No, I'm sorry. Oh, what about what about uh, the homecoming for Ilya Taporia in... Uh, yes, I was just about to say. Taporia and uh, Mark Coleman. Of course. Oh well, let's uh, let's 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 talk about Mark Coleman. That's the most exciting news. Uh, feeling better, getting better. Um, have been in touch with people uh, very close to him. Would love to speak to him, but of course, I understand that he can't. Um, you know, he can't speak for an incredible length of time. Uh, has been at the gym. I saw a video with him and Matt Brown. We have any uh, footage of Mark Coleman? Uh, we sure do. I think he actually released one this morning, giving giving an update on how he is. Okay, let's see it. Good morning, everybody. Just want to let you all know that I'm overwhelmed with the love and support I'm receiving. I can't believe it. I'm so grateful to be here today. I am so blessed. I'm one of the luckiest men in the world. I can't thank you all enough. I'm just so grateful. I'll continue to try to motivate people to move forward and be a better version of themselves. You never know when you're gonna need it. So let's go. Start today. Tomorrow's not promised. Get moving. There's stuff to do. Love you all. Sober school. Carnivore diet. Nine ancestral tenants. Hammer house. For life. You're all in. Thank you. What a legend. Love Mark Coleman. That's right. Hammer House for life. I uh, hope he continues to feel better. And you know, there was once a time, I've talked about this on the show, where I would say I, um, I wasn't anti-dogs, but I wasn't a dog person. And perhaps there was a time where I would say, all right, you know, you survived, your parents survived. It's unfortunate your dog didn't make it. Now, that to me is akin to a family member. Uh, now that now that I've had my my dog matcha for about five years, I am very much a dog person. Or maybe I'm just a matcha person, but I get the pain. And you can tell that he is when he's saying he's the happiest person or the luckiest person in the world. I still I, I feel that pain because there's nothing. When I go home tonight, I will walk through the door, and you know, my kids will be doing their thing. Maybe they'll be eating. Maybe they'll be on their iPad. Maybe they'll be watching a show, playing video games, doing homework, whatever. There is one soul that is going to greet me like they haven't seen me for 15 years. And there's nothing like that feeling. It is the best. I mean, it's unlike anything. I, I actually feel sorry for people who have never experienced love like this before. It is unbelievable. My dog, Macha is is just and I, I know everyone feels the same way and so it's just special and so I, I feel his pain because it was his dog as he as he told us last week that woke him up to alert him about the fire which just shows 
these incredible creatures. Unbelievable, the loyalty. So I feel for him, but obviously so happy that he's um, alive and well, that his parents are alive and well. Wishing him the best. And it's great to see the MMA community um, support him and and uh, contribute to you know everything that he is having to deal with now. Um, speaking of the community, Ilya Taporia back in Georgia, and there were incredible scenes. How about these scenes in Georgia as he gets the uh, the homecoming of all homecomings? There he is, El Campeón himself, the featherweight champion, arriving at the airport. I mean, look at this turnout. This is incredible. I mean, look at this. This is like Michael Jackson showing up. <laughs> He's uh, insane. like insane. The car is barely being getting. Engulfed. Yes, he can barely even get it in the car. You got the posters. You got the roses. Superstar, man. Superstar. Can't wait to make my debut in Spain later this year. You're going to go? That is like a fight that I really, really, really want to go to. Yeah. That's the one. Yes. That is like a, a fight I will pay. At the Bernabeu. Absorbent. Oh, my gosh. Then I'm there. Then I'm really there. I'll oh, you don't the, care? I'll sit in the nosebleeds and stream it on ESPN Plus if I have to. <laughs> <laughs> just gotta get, just get a in the look. building. I mean, that is like, that's that's I, that that's something I'll I'll it's, I'll spend an exorbitant amount of money on to be there. By the way, um, the boys said you can do Alta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You I into it? Wor- I was getting a little worried. There was a pretty long pause after you were like, uh, you're like, yeah, you know, Connor seems interested, but he's not so sure about the fight. I thought they were gonna be like. Oh, well, he's just scared then. He's, no, no. He doesn't want a piece of that. Something uh, for everyone. Yeah, I was looking it up. There's not it's not really many gyms close to me okay. there within the Alta program. So maybe as they continue to expand. Well, we could work on that. Yeah. 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 Um, and and we one... Can be, we can go rolling together. We'll get you in there, too. No, nah, listen. I'm, I'm more of a... Um, I'm more of a private guy. You know, I don't want to... You know put myself out there for everyone. You don't know these days with the cell phones and everything. Private. Yeah. Um, I uh, I did want to congratulate also our old friend Marshall Zelaznik appointed the new CEO of Glory Kickboxing. Um, uh, Marshall was with the UFC for quite some time and actually was with Glory uh, as their CEO between 2018 and 2020. Um, he had uh, a large role in the UFC on their media and international business side uh, in the UK, and also was a huge part of the uh, the growth of UFC Fight Pass. Now back with Glory, um, and Glory coming off that one-night tournament, the heavyweight tournament won by the GOAT, Rico Verhoeven. So uh, good luck to Marshall Zelaznik, who's been on this show before. Uh, the next Glory event is April 27th, Glory 91. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.